If you're looking for a more affordable Surface Pro type of two-in-one Windows tablet, today we're checking out the iWork GT Ultra by Aldo Cube. I wanna thank them for sending this over to review on the channel. I believe this is available in about six different countries so far, but I'll leave a link down below with current pricing and more information. <laughs> It comes with Windows 11. Actually has a really nice aluminum build quality. Feels like some plastic on the back though. And it weighs about 850 grams and is 9.89 millimeters thick. It's powered by a 4.5 gigahertz Intel Core Ultra 5 125H processor. Also has an Intel Arc graphics GPU. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of PCIe storage. Only takes about seven seconds to boot up. Has ultra thin high speed fans to keep things running cool and quiet. And it's got three USB ports as well. One USB-A 3.0 and two USB-C 3.1 ports. It's got a 13 inch IPS touchscreen display at 2560 by 1600 resolution at 60 hertz refresh rate, 500 inch brightness, and it's at 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Also supports a 4096 USI pressure sensitive pen. During setup, it's gonna be very similar to other Windows PCs and tablets. There's gonna be a lot of Windows updates at first. You definitely wanna have the charging cable connected while doing the initial Windows updates because there's actually quite a few. But once you get past that, it's gonna feel very familiar if you've used other Windows products before. I think the build quality on this is probably a little nicer than I was expecting. Actually looks pretty good. The bezels around the sides look pretty good as well. I feel like the hinge on the built-in stand seems pretty nice and sturdy. So you can put this at a lot of different angles. Does feel like a plastic material though. Looks like it's still got some more updates to finish, but it still has over 900 gigabytes available. So, so plenty of storage space on here in my opinion. It's got most of your typical pre-installed apps from Microsoft. Of course you have Copilot as the assistant. Of course you have split screen and floating windows. You actually have several different options there along the top on layout options. I actually think the screen quality on here is probably a little better than expected as well. It has good contrast, colors seem nice and vibrant, pretty good viewing angles. I think most people are gonna like the screen quality on here. I think the keyboard on here is actually pretty nice. Feels like much better quality than I was expecting. The keys seem to have just about the right amount of travel. Feels very comfortable to type on for a while. The trackpad seems pretty good size as well. Feels nice and smooth when using it. You can see how the keyboard attaches magnetically, so it's just a little bit higher. I feel like most people are probably gonna use this with the keyboard more than without. It just seems to make more sense with Windows, in my opinion. Now the pen doesn't attach to the tablet, but there's a nice spot here on the keyboard, which actually seems to work pretty good. Now when you're downloading everything at first, you are gonna notice some fan noise. Not bad though. I feel like once everything's downloaded, it goes back to normal, where it's only gonna kick on every so often. It's got a 42.72 watt hour battery with a 65 watt fast charger. Also has five pin pogo pin for accessories. You can get up to seven hours battery life on here, but obviously battery life is gonna be very subjective. Depending on what types of stuff you'll be doing, it's also gonna depend on screen brightness while using it and a lot of other variables. I think battery life is decent on this one so far, but we'll have to see how it goes once I test this out some more. I think performance on here is actually better than expected. It seems pretty smooth so far. Just moving around the software, things seem to open pretty quick. I don't really notice any lag or stuttering yet. It definitely seems to be a good option for productivity or schoolwork. It's got pretty fast loading times and smooth multitasking. I also think this can be a good option to do some light gaming on. It seems fairly smooth at 1080p resolution. It's not gonna be the highest frame rates though or the highest graphic settings. So just keep that in mind. Now the speaker quality on here is gonna be the best out there. I feel like they could be a tad louder overall, but overall not bad. I feel like most people are gonna be using headphones most of the time anyways. But here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what it sounds like.
As far as the cameras go, it's got a five megapixel on the back, five megapixel on the front, also has dual digital mics and dual speakers as well. The camera quality on here is not gonna be the best. I feel like you could probably use it for Zoom meetings or other video conference calls if you had to. Just make sure you have good lighting. The front facing camera does have a flash, but here's a couple quick samples just to give you an idea. I feel like if you're looking for a more affordable two-in-one device that's similar to the Surface Pro, this is definitely one to consider, especially since the keyboard and pen is included. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.